some of these laws, if they were applied, would make you a horrible person and others that actually might be effective and how to actually effectively use them. And why am I doing that? Because Robert Greene has said himself, you'd be difficult to live with if you actually lived by all of these. And in later interviews, he said, listen, one of the reasons that I wrote the book is because people do these manipulations and you're going to be much better off if you know what's coming at you by being aware of them. Welcome back to Durand On Demand, where we're walking through the 48 Laws of Power by Robert Greene. Before I get into the sixth law, if you've been following this series, I have a couple of different things I want to say about this. Um, I want to kind of uh, mention some of the comments that are coming through, by and large, just positive comments. Wow, that's insightful. I hadn't thought of that. But there are a couple of other comments on opposite sides. Actually, they're quite interesting. One person said, I just want you to know your And the reason that you're is because you're advocating this book and telling everybody to buy it. It's a book, blah, blah, blah. Um, no, I actually am not doing that at all. You should go back to watch the first episode because what you would find in there is that I am actually trying to show you where some of these laws, if they were applied, would make you a horrible person and others that actually might be effective and how to actually effectively use them. And why am I doing that? Because even though some people say, and Robert Greene has said himself, I'm actually not here to judge Robert Greene. I'm not here to say Robert Greene wrote this book for a particular reason. He, in his own words, said that you'd be difficult to live with if you actually lived by all of these. And in later interviews, he said, listen, one of the reasons that I wrote the book is because people do these manipulations and you're going to be much better off if you know what's coming at you by being aware of them. He has a very unique look at human nature. It's very true. There are manipulations out there like this. But the reason that I'm doing this is because... Most people do not pick this book up and say to themselves, I want to read this to see if I'm being manipulated to others. They pick it up and they say, I'm going to use these to have power over other people and I will manipulate them. And absolutely without question, you see it. And in some of the people who actually make the comments and they defend it, sometimes people say, well, this is not an instruction manual. You've got this wrong. He's not trying to tell you how to be. I know. And you obviously aren't paying attention to what I'm saying because I've said that from the beginning. In fact, some of the critics go, obviously this man has never read the book. And that's a pretty funny thing because they've not even watched my videos to know that I've obviously read the book. So again, some unique insights in these, but there are some destructive things in them along with things that could be good. Now, actually, um, uh, Green does go through and he has a a part of this in each law called the reversal, which is where you might not actually use this law. You do something in reverse. But in almost every single circumstance where he does that, he does it by saying, hey, just so you know, in order to be cutting, in order to position yourself just for a period of time, you might not want to use this law because it would be better to your advantage to hide from the use of the law so people can't see you doing it. And then when people least expect it, leap on them and then do it. So he doesn't ever really say the reversal is because the law is bad. He more or less says you can't get away with something if you do it. So something to keep in mind. Law number six, court attention at all costs. Everything is judged by its appearance. What is unseen counts for nothing. Never let yourself get lost in the crowd then or buried in oblivion. Stand out. Be conspicuous at all costs. Make yourself a magnet of attention by appearing larger, more colorful, more mysterious than the bland and timid masses. One of the problems that Robert Greene has when he purports these sorts of things, whether he's talking about others doing it to you or giving you a strategy to do it for others or whatever you're taking it, is that he speaks in extremes. And the reason that he speaks in extremes is because, well, it's compelling to people. It draws them in. But everything is judged by its appearance. What is unseen counts for nothing. That's first of all false. It's a false statement. It is true that many things, maybe even the majority, are judged by their appearance. Um, but what is unseen is not does not count for nothing at all. Okay, um, you know we we actually know this just even when you buy a car. If you want to buy a Ferrari, you can't see the engine; you just see the outside. You'd have to open up the hood to see what is in there. So, what is unseen is assumed to be good. I want to buy this Ferrari because it has a massive engine that is very powerful, which I cannot see, but I'm assuming is there. Now, he might flip that argument and say, yeah, but it's the flashy shape and the redness of the outside of it that gets you to believe that it's powerful on the inside. Well, it's also the experience of the car and the people who previously owned them to get me to believe that what is on the inside is actually real and substantial. So the outside represents the inside. So what is seen matches what is unseen. And that's why I want to get it. 
To believe that what is unseen counts for nothing is to say, I'm going to appear honest, but what's unseen is that I'm a liar. Well, eventually people are going to catch on to that, and that's a problem. Never let yourself get lost in the crowd then or buried in oblivion. All right, I'm not going to attack this. I have reasons to tell you why that would be ineffective here and there, but fine. If you want to always just kind of stand out, that's okay. There's no moral component to this, and it could make you obnoxious to other people. Sometimes blending it is actually a better strategy for being effective in things but he says stand out be conspicuous at all costs and he gives examples for you know for example like pt barnum uh you know his the premier 19th century showman uh and these are you know compelling examples uh one of the things that uh people will oftentimes say in hollywood is that bad publicity is better than no publicity and that's basically the point that he's making here you know is that really true it's not actually true when you want to stand out and be con- conspicuous at all costs you're going to attract some people but there's a lot of really good people that you're not going to actually attract and you have to live with yourself afterwards. Make yourself a magnet of attention by appearing larger, more colorful, more mysterious than the bland and timid masses. First of all, if you're just talking about the status of who you are and when you literally are pursuing prideful things and vanity on a regular basis, it changes your character. So it can actually have a long term effect on you. But the other thing that I would tell you on this is that this last section is It's a little bit benign. Okay. Um, I don't like to attack everything that he says just because he says it. I mean, some of the things that he's saying, they're not actually bad strategies, but they have to be in the right context here. Make yourself a magnet of attention by appearing larger, more colorful, more mysterious than the bland and timid masses. What I like about this is that he didn't say larger, more colorful, more mysterious than you actually are. Okay, that's often his advice is like that. Here he's saying, then the bland and timid masses. Okay, well, actually, that's really good marketing advice. It's not bad personal marketing, personal brand approach, depending on what it is you're trying to do. Um, it can actually be really good to stand out. And so this is an interesting one because you've got everything is judged by its appearance. What is unseen counts for nothing. I would give him a thumb sideways or one up, one down. Many things are judged by their appearance, but what is unseen actually does count for something. Never let yourself get lost in the crowd or buried in oblivion. Eh, I'm neutral on that sort of thing. Stand out. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think in some ways that's pretty positive. In some ways it could be bad, but mostly it's it's pretty pas- positive. Be conspicuous at all costs. Very negative. Be conspicuous. Sure. At all costs. No way. Make yourself a magnet of attention by appearing larger, more colorful, more mysterious than the bland and timid masses. At times, that's fantastic advice. No doubt about it. Robert Green gets a thumbs up, thumbs down on law number six. Court attention at all costs. Hey there, Giant. Thanks for watching Durand On Demand. I need your help with something. The world desperately needs more giants. You know it and I know it. We've been around a lot of people struggling, figuring out how to make things go. So hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, share this with as many people as you can. We're going to build this audience and we're going to help people slay dragons together.